Hey guys, this is Casby with Tape, and today you join me for episode 6 of Outer Planets. Yes, it's uh, finally back. I do these very sporadically, because either I record them on live stream or it kind of goes by the wayside, because collaborative warfare is a bit more of a commitment sort of thing. But anyway, I'm, I'm back, and we're, we're, we're going to slate again, using pretty much the same rocket, slightly different vehicle. And today we're not carrying a satellite, we're carrying just some extra things to help us land, because slate's really hard to land on. It's kind of like hard at landing on Tylo, a task I've never actually achieved, I've just never really bothered, but uh, <clears throat> I thought Slate would be a, a, a big good challenge, and it's a really nice looking planet, it has lots of mountain ridges and things, so yeah, I pretty much just wanted to give it a shot, really, so um, yeah, anyway, uh, first stage is burn out, and uh, onto the second stage, and you can see the third, the third stage is a nuclear stage, not in the fairing, because it would be kind of pointless to put it in the fairing. Although I guess I do have to bring that fairing ring the whole way with me, maybe that's something I should think about if it would be better to just put it, probably would, because fairing rings are really heavy, but at the same time so are fairing walls, but then I could just use a bigger rocket, because yeah, this is a pretty down to the wire mission. Um, um, you can see there's a solid rocket booster below the lander, and you may be thinking, what the hell, that's not very good in space, it's actually just for um, kind of a kick to uh, slow myself down around uh, Slate. Anyway, after a little bit of planning, um, all done by MechJab because I, again, still haven't bothered to learn how to actually plan a maneuver with Vitus Asanas. Uh, it would be obviously relatively similar to other ones, so you just have to know the right phase angles, and I don't, even though I could probably just look at past videos. Um, it's just easy to use MechJab. MechJab, MechJab makes my uh, life much easier. Um, the engines almost rip themselves off again because, of course, those fairings eject sideways, which is really annoying. And, uh, yeah, just uh, again carry out the burn, because I did a little bit with that uh, upper stage, because I'm not wasting Delta V, because this is really down to the wire, and I can't use that solid rocket booster for anything else, and it's main intention, I almost included a liquid fuel booster, but decided against it, because of weight reasons. So, uh, we are now into four times time accelerate, just so you can see the whole burn. Uh, it doesn't take that long with two nuclear engines, and um, like a fairly light payload, however, when I take the Pandora out there, which is the big mothership I'm building, um, that will take a while, because it also has two nuclear engines and weighs about 300 tons. Um, so that's going to take me a while, but obviously you'll just be able to see it all sped up and edited. Anyway, I'm just going to obviously um, bring my periaps down to Sarnus. Now, the thing is about this, is I don't actually have enough Delta V to slow down around Sarnus, so I'm just going to go right to Slate. However, um, and this is actually what I got when I targeted Slate, um, my original thinking was I'd gravity assist off Slate to slow myself down, um, and then I realized, oh yeah, I might as well just stop at Slate, because then I can use the solid rocket booster, because then that'll actually perform its slowdown maneuver, maneuver around Slate. So, yeah, um, I actually spent ages tweaking it to try and use Slate to slow me down around Sarnus so that I could re-rendezvous with Slate later, so I'm actually in a slightly less efficient position. Uh, yeah, I think what you're seeing now is the first maneuver to second bit? I'm not sure. Oh, and then uh, this is just bringing... Yeah, that was the maneuver to get near to Slate, and then this is just bringing my periaps down. And at this point, I have just decided to... Um, uh, just, just to land on Slate straight off the bat, because it'll be much easier. Um, and I couldn't really get a very good position to actually gravity assist m myself into a slower position. But anyway, here we are at Sarnus. Yes, very uh, very edited today. Although I haven't edited out any content, pretty much just warping, which takes a while, especially on the way to Sarnus, which is a six-year transit. And a, um, time accelerate can take about half an hour. Um, but anyway, here we are, uh, dropping down closer and closer to Slate. You can see we've got a couple of satellites already in orbit. The one I dropped off last episode... Um, which is one of them, I'm not entirely sure which, I think the one in the highly elliptical orbit, and the other one is, I think, the first probe I ever sent to Sarnus, which is just a little science probe. I've been very interested in Slate, obviously I tried to land on Tecto, but I really don't like the atmosphere, I'd, um, because I kind of got stuck there, if you remember, because the atmosphere was way thicker than I'd anticipated, um, which was very, very stupid of me. Um, <laughs> And anyway, uh, this is a slowing down, and now I've kicked it into four times time accelerate again because it took quite a while because I used all this RCS as well because this was kind of my extra little bit of maneuvering stage that I might need. Um, so I just used all the fuel from that um, because never waste fuel, kids. Uh, especially in space. And now fire up the solid rocket booster which pulls us into not a circular orbit because I was um, uh, facing the wrong way, which is basically my second orbital mistake of the episode. 
Um, the first one was putting myself into a weird orbit around, well, a weird position around Slate to try and slow myself down. The second one was a oh, nice beauty shot, though. <laughs> the second one was that solid rocket booster pointing not quite the right way, and then this uh, leaving me to have to land like this, which isn't technically a mistake because this is what I was left with, but still not ideal going directly down onto the surface. You want to go kind of laterally so you don't lose quite so much um, energy to gravity pulling you down, which is a problem. Um, but yeah, well, I would ideally like to land by a mountain range, but I didn't have a huge amount of uh, choice in this. And this is largely the same probe as the one I sent last episode. Obviously, it just had the solid rocket booster, and it has a little more fuel. Um, so yeah, hopefully this will actually go quite well. I actually do have a lot of Delta V. This could have gone lots worse. Um, but uh, yeah, I... The, yeah, I, I'm running low on fuel basically, and you can see I keep stop, um, keep uh, starting to stop burning uh, my engines because I'm just seeing how long it'll take me roughly to hit the floor and how long it'll take me to burn off all my fuel. I'm pretty much just balancing all of that, and here we are about to um, hopefully land softly on the surface, but probably not. And this is obviously in one times time accelerated, and we have the beautiful sun. It's there anyway. We are now out of fuel. I'm pretty sure the whole probe will be lost, but then when we slam down. It turns out it's not. However, the main bit of the probe does fall off the lander, but the main bit of the probe survived, and that's the actual science package. It has the power generation. It has everything. Um, obviously, uh, this is just a bit superfluous and was more to test. I, I do these sort of things in um, sandbox just to kind of see what it's like to land on it. And this was a very close attempt. If I'd had a little bit more Delta V and just slightly better planning, it w well, more Delta V or slightly better planning would have gone quite well. And you can see, obviously, we're in a vacuum. It's about... 110 degrees Kelvin did that uh, thermometer say if you were watching and um, the gravity is a little less than on Kerbin uh, what? Yeah, <laughs> and because it has torque and basically infinite electric charge because it has an RTG I can roll it around and do rovery things but I just leave it here just doing its thing I think I did lose the antenna actually but still not a total failure much better than last time anyway now for a little bit more of building Pandora. I've forgotten exactly who sent, uh, who told me to call it Pandora, but I'm pretty sure I mentioned you last episode, so no more shouting out for you. Um, anyway, let's launch this Saturn V. I almost dropped it onto the pad because I released it with um, too little fuel going through the engine. Anyway, I'm. this is a four times time accelerator, but I was going up incredibly fast, which was not ideal because I'm only launching a very light payload, but um, this is basically the heavy lift vehicle I've designed for these missions. Um, Basically, there's this heavy lift vehicle, the vehicle you saw last time for um, probe type missions, and um, I could make a bigger version of that if I really needed. And I have some uh, another smaller vehicle in a launch vehicle in the works for manned missions. I like to kind of when I do these sort of uh, missions, like design just a few vehicles rather than constantly redesigning them because I I I like realism. Obviously, KSP is quite fun because if you're just playing, you might just want to, you know, um, uh, design like tons of different vehicles all the time so you can get better and better but uh, the main reason I'm using this is because KW Rocketry gives a really really nice Saturn V analog so I use it even for really tiny payloads um, and this is a relatively small payload but it would have been difficult to launch on anything other than a 5 meter rocket and I didn't really want to redesign my 5 meter rocket because yeah, I, I you know I'm just a bit of a stickler for slight realism. Obviously not massively. I'm pretty brash with KSP. But anyway, I overburned because I always seem to forget that KW rocket tree engines take a little while to spool down as they do in real life. So I'll just use this um, RCS stage which I have here to push this into the right orientation. Um, this lander is technically a three-stage lander. Uh, it has just three engines which will all be burning the whole time, but it has a couple of drop tanks. Um, that I used basically like the solid rocket booster was used with that probe just to kind of slow me down at a high up altitude and then it has sustainer tanks, um, that's what I'm calling them anyway, on the side uh, for most of the burn to the ground and then it has the main tank for landing on, um, on tech, well, not tecto, on um, slate. Um, and slates, uh, not slate, the lander is, this is kind of, if you've read The Martian or know anything about it or seen it actually, um, this is like the Mars Descent Vehicle. Uh, it will not leave Sarnas, it is, well, no, it will not leave slate, it is one use. Um, it only has the Delta V to get to the ground and it can carry six Kerbals there and it was kind of a bit of a engineering feat to uh, put all of this into one thing. I would obviously like a one stage lander because that would probably be reusable, but yeah, not to be. Anyway, I will also be launching, um, a, a, a Mars, well no, a Slate Ascent Vehicle, um, a SAV and a SAV, oh, I oh, know it would be SDV and Air and SAV, 
Ops. Yeah, okay, whatever. Like kind of like the Mars Descent vehicles and the Mars Ascent vehicle. Anyway, I'm ditching this uh, little service module now. I'm just going to switch on the engines and leave it flying away. And then I'm just going to orientate this pointing at the Pandora spacecraft. And then I'm going to use the Pandora's RCS to move in because the lander doesn't have any RCS because that would be totally superfluous because it's never going to do a docking. Um, and I didn't want to carry any more weight than I had to. This, however, does have a little bit of RCS. I've left this all in. This is now at four times time accelerate just to make it slightly less painful. But I never put these in and they're actually kind of very interesting maneuvers if you're a nerd like me. Um, since it has like four little thrusters and weighs a huge amount. Um, it needs to maneuver over there. Anyway, so the Pandora is basically designed uh, with a maximum capacity. As it is now, this is its kind of raw version, kind of if you just thought of a, a launch vehicle or a rocket just sitting with no payload. Um, it could actually take about 60 um, to 65 tons out to Sarnus successfully, and then it will refuel at Sarnus, because I'm just going to send out a bunch of uh, uh, like fueling landers and things to mine on slate, although probably not slate. Slate would be the stupidest place to mine. Um, <laughs> although I will need a small mining thing that doesn't leave slate to refuel my ascent vehicle because the ascent vehicle will have to land and take off. That's a very difficult thing to do and I haven't even designed the ascent vehicle yet, but this will be a long time before, well not a long time, it'll be a few episodes before this actually goes because I have a lot of things I need to do to have infrastructure around um, Sarnas and Slate and just learn how to land on Slate because as you've seen previously I'm not amazing at it. Anyway, um, yeah this is all just kind of moving in very gently at about half a meter a second um, and just making lots of little maneuvers which are really really long RCS burns because there are four RCS engines and uh, just a very, very heavy spacecraft. I was originally going to dock this on the side, but I'm only taking one, um, and I don't want to have to figure out just like a random 35-ton payload to put on the other side um, for no reason. So I'm going to put this on the end. I'm going to install a Kerbal attachment system to put struts on it so it doesn't flex too much. <coughs> and then two, uh, two of the docking ports on that middle docking ring will be used for very little vehicles, and the other two will be used for things to come and refuel it because that's going to be an important part of the mission. But anyway, uh, this is one times time accelerate because then you can see the elegance of this docking. Uh, it was relatively elegant. And um, with giant vehicles, it's best to just line up and then just drift in rather than doing lots of little sideways maneuvers and things because big vehicles don't like sideways maneuvers. But there we are, that is docked and that is everything in this episode. Not a crazy big episode, I mean, I just had a few things I wanted to do. And I had not a huge amount of time to do them in, so I hope you have enjoyed this. This has been KSP Out of Planets, Episode 6. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.